What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Randy here with RTS Mobile Gaming, and bringing you a dynamite video today. We are playing the Lord of the Rings Rise to War, and in today's video, we are talking about the commanders that I, Randy, am going to be using on my main account for the season start, okay? This is not a free-to-play video. My free-to-play video I did yesterday for all of you folks. Check that out on my channel. Uh, this video is what Randy's going to be running on his main account in this season four. As we all know, over the past day or two, the season four campaign information has come out. The War of the Ring is purely roleplay. So if you, uh, as you can see here in the description, this campaign is purely roleplay. The non-roleplay campaign we're expecting to launch sometime in the next week to a month. The developers have not given us a concrete date, but they have hinted that it's coming soon. So this is going to be Randy's Commanders from an RP standpoint because I am joining the RP campaign, okay? Now that we got that out of the way, uh, I'm not taking a political stance on that particular issue. We're going to go ahead and start talking about my commanders, okay? So, the primary commander that I'm going to be using is going to be the Witch King, okay? We're going to talk about the skills I'm going to use, the first 30 skill points I'm going to plug into him, and all the pieces of gear that I'm going to run, okay? So his first uh, 30 skill points are going to look like this. I'm going to be maximizing out Black Captain, then I'm going to maximize Convener. These two are going to be maximized together. It'll be 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1 until they're maxed out. Black Captain's really nice because it's plus damage. It's also plus 2 HP. Plus HP and plus attack are the most valuable stats early in the game because your tier 1 units have very low HP and very low damage. So your um, return ratio per HP point and per uh, damage point is massively more valuable than using it at tier three, okay? So, look for gear and skills and stuff that give plus HP and plus attack, okay? Convener's a double strike and initiative. After that, you're gonna be going down into the ring wraith tree. You'll be maximizing ring wraith, right? In this video, we're talking about the first 30 points. This is what my ring, my, my uh, Witch King's gonna look like with this thir first 30 points into his build, okay? In his level 15 to 20 range, his skill set is going to look like this. This is going to give me a little bit of damage, a chance to stun. The main goal is to get this at 7 out of 7 before we move into the other trees. This is going to enable the Witch King to stun somebody in round 1, two people in round 1, get out ridiculous damage in round 1 and 2, and move on with his life, okay? Gear-wise, the gear is very simple. You're, again, going to want to get stuff with plus attack and plus HP, okay? So, the cutlass for melee. This is this is the best in slot purple for melee units, okay? I would run this if you're running melee. If you're going to run ranged units, you could run potentially the Uruk crossbow um, and do something like that, okay? So, plus attack, plus attack. You can also run the Easterling, Easterling spear if you're going to run cavalry. However, cavalry will not benefit... Uh, they're only going to get half the benefit from the plus attack. So I would recommend running infantry uh, early game, okay? They're also cheaper and quicker to train. Chess piece-wise, it's up to you what kind of troops you have access to. If you happen to have a five-star Berserker's Raiment with plus three HP to Urukai, it would be a great idea to run Urukai units on your Witch King. If you don't have this five-star Berserker's Raiment, uh, or you have some different armor, it's also going to be very beneficial for you to run something like the Protection of Numenor with plus, plus HP to your evil men. Um, or if you're going to run range units, you can run Ranger Shroud with plus damage. Or you can drop down and run the Superior Hirbjörk with plus 15 defense to your entire army, plus 30 might. You can get the Shroud ability. The Shroud ability is probably the best in slot early game. Um, the Shroud ability will give you a 60% chance for your army to dodge the first damage of instance which is going to help you survive early game, like I said, okay? Helmet, same thing. If you can get a helmet with plus attack on it to support your troops, right? Berserker's Gaze is going to give me plus attack from my Urukai, okay? Uh, Trapper's Hood is going to give me plus attack from my ranged. So these are the two recommendations for plus attack early game. Once you get into the level 30s, you are going to start running anti-crowd control, whether it's a horseman's helm with resolve or warding for the anti-stun or anti-madness. Or if you have a Berserker's Gaze with the anti-stun on it, you're going to want to be running anti-crowd control on Witch King going into your level 30s, okay? So just keep that in mind. For the accessory, again, plus attack is king. 
Uh, the Palantir of Orthanc is probably what I'm going to be using on the Witch King because it gives plus two attack and it gives the Pursuit buff, which means I can counter Avoidance. So that's the main goal on Witch King is counter CC, counter Avoidance, and make sure your units can connect with their damage no matter what. Okay, so this is good. Plus two attack. So let's just say theoretically I'm using the ranged build. I've got plus three attack on my weapon, plus three attack on my chest, plus three attack on my helmet, and plus two attack on my accessory. Now we're at plus 11 attack to my units, and early game archers, uh, what are they, like 12 to 14 damage range? You're almost doubling their damage just by putting on the plus attack here, okay? That's Witch King. The next commander I will be using here in Season 3 is going to be Black Serpent, okay? Black Serpent is very, very strong. He's very interesting, and his amount of damage early in the fight with his combined Defensive capabilities makes him very, very valuable uh, for early game, okay? So, your first 15 points are going to absolutely go into Horn of the Hurrah. There is no if ands, or buts about that, okay? From there, we're going to drop, uh, we're probably going to drop up into the Haradrim tree. So we can grab Haradrim, and we can grab Evil Alliance to reduce our damage, okay? Our damage taken. So the uh, Haradrim tree is going to be... Uh, like I said, the first 30 points is going to look like this. Boop. So I'm going to reduce the damage I take by 10% here, reduce it by another 10% here. So I'm now I'm reducing my damage by 20%. I'm increasing my damage output in the first couple rounds. Um, and you're going to keep moving your points into maximizing Haven, Haradrim, and Evil Alliance. So by the time I have uh, 40 points to apply, which for me, since I'm respect level seven, and I have wisdom, and I have a strategist, right? So that's plus uh, plus eleven skill points to use. Hang on. <laughs> okay, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's plus thirteen skill points to use. Just tell me to shut up. So at level thirty-three, I will have these abilities maxed out. At level thirty-three, I'll have Haradrim, Evil Alliance, Horn of Harad, and Haven maxed out. Okay. That's the goal. By level 33, get here, and then we can talk about tribal tactics for more damage, okay? Gear-wise, um, this stuff is pretty standard and straightforward. You can, If you have a sand claw, this will be very valuable for you, not with poison coating, but with some of the other abilities, okay? Uh, or you can use the cutlass. The cutlass is going to be very valuable for you. It's going to give you plus attack and damage, okay? You can also use, if you're going to run Cavalry, the Easterling Spear, very similar concepts to the Witch King. Get as much plus attack as you can to really amplify that 60% damage bonus from round one, okay? Um, for the chest, you're probably, going to be want to, you're probably going to want to run Evil Men on Black Serpent, okay? In that case, you are going to want to run the Great Plate of the East or the Protection of Numenor as your primaries because of the plus HP. Um, but also, just as nice would be the Scale Mail with the Melee Vigor or the Shroud uh, on one of the other chess pieces that give plus defense, okay? Really up to you. For the Helmet, uh, I'm a big fan of running Madness on Black Serpent. I happen to just like running the Bone Mask on him. Um, you're also going to want to, again, same with Witch King, um, in the mid-30s, you're going to want to be running Anti-Stun or Anti-Madness. Personally, last season, I ran Anti-Madness on him and not Anti-Stun. It's really up to you, um, but the Bone Mask will be amazing early game with that plus HP, okay? For the accessory, this is one where I'll probably be running the Worn Out Smoking Pipe. This is going to give enormous healing. Um, I'll be running this in the mid-20s, but up until I'm in the mid-20 to 30 range, I'll probably be running the Drums of Moria, which will give me plus attack and speed, okay? So that's the Black Serpent, ladies and gentlemen. The next commander that I plan on using, okay, and again, keep in mind, this is my main account. This is not a free-to-play video. I get it, but Kieran is going to be my third commander that I'm using here in Season 4 uh, for evil, okay? He is enormously strong, and with his first 30 points, it's going to look a little bit like this. The main goal is to uh, maximize your Sand Soldier and your Frontline Rescue, as well as keep three points up in Golden Visage in order to trigger the Sandstorm ability, okay? So your first couple points will look like this, all right? Um, and the reason I'm putting more points in Frontline Rescue is because Frontline Rescue will be uh, more effective in your early game healing. 
since you're not going to have battles that last 10 rounds, your overall healing from Sand Soldier will be a little bit less than Frontline Rescue, okay? So run three melee units in your army, max out Frontline Rescue as, as fast as possible, okay? Um, Gear-wise, this is a good one. Gear-wise for Kieran, uh, early game, you're probably going to actually want to run the Carver. The Carver is going to be one of the easiest, best-in-slot weapons for Kieran in early game. The Smite ability, when it triggers, will activate another healing from his, uh, his R0 healing tree. The plus attack, you can't beat it, okay? This is good. Last season, I actually ran a Cutlass. I just opted, instead of getting the additional healing, I decided to get 9% more damage. Really up to you. Uh, the Carver's probably a little bit more valuable for troop sustainability early game, okay? Up to you. For the chest, this one, again, you can run Great Plate of the East or Protection of Numenor. They'll both give you fantastic HP to your evil men. Or you can drop down and you can grab the Superior Hubuk with Shroud. That's going to be amazing for you, having the Shroud ability. Uh, as, as well as uh, having, the, uh, having the Scale Mail with the Melee Vigor is going to be very strong as well. Really, it depends on which chest you have Okay, and what you like. They'll be very similar performance. Now, for Kieran, I am a big fan of running this helmet. I do think that the Cask of Pride is very, very strong for Kieran. Uh, really, for any commander with the melee suppression ability, this is going to um, drastically reduce the damage I take for the first three rounds. It's going to give me plus 20 defense and 50% reduced damage taken for the first three rounds. Very nice to see that. If you don't have that helmet or you want to run something different, uh, try Bone Mask with Manipulate. This is something that I like run on Kieran. This is something I'll probably end up running on Kieran for uh, season th uh, season four start start <laughs> season four start. Since most of the armies you're facing are only going to have one or two troops in the army early game, this Manipulate ability is actually massively massively strong. So that would be my suggestion for you folks. Okay, for the accessory. Okay. This one, you can probably run Drums of Barodur. It's going to give you a few hundred healing every round, as well as plus attack. That'll be very strong for you. You can run Drums of Moria. This will be very strong. You could run the Healing Pipe. It's really up to you. Uh, all of these are going to be very strong. Early, early game, I would recommend sticking to plus attack from Drums of Moria or the Drums of Barodur. Okay? So that is Kieran. And finally, folks, for the fourth commander that I'm going to be running here in Season 4, because I last season I ran uh, five commanders, the previous season I ran six, and I've decided that running four commanders is probably going to be the best for me. Um, the next commander I'm going to run, if... Now, okay, so the reason why I'm picking all these evil men is because if I pick a faction that has early access to evil men, that's what I want. But if you don't have access uh, early access to evil men... Gothmog is absolutely fantastic early game uh, for these following reasons, okay? He can be very, very strong early game, which is why I'm talking about him right now. His ability, similar to... Um, let me get my coffee here. Gothmog's ability early in the game to give plus 60% damage for the first four rounds to his orcs and trolls is super strong, okay? You can run this uh, very effectively and put out enormous damage on the enemy, okay? Uh, as far as the next couple skills you want to get, you want to drop down into the second-in-command tree, and you're going to want to start getting the anticipation ability, okay? Again, this is your first 30 points, okay? Your first 30 points is going to look like this, okay? So what I would run with Gothmog is Orc Archers, the Tier 1 and Tier 2 Orc Archers, because um, they're going to have very high damage ratios early game compared to other units. This is going to really compound their massive damage, okay? Uh, having second in command is going to give them another 10% damage. So now we're at 70% damage for the first four rounds. Uh, and as you continue to level, you're going to maximize anticipation, which at max level will give your units a 75% chance to dodge the first, four, um, the first four attacks that they receive. This is your archers. So you can run the orc archers combined with the orc um, infantry, the, the whatever, the shieldmen, whatever their name is, the, the brutes. You can run the brutes 
a, a two unit march. You can run a couple hundred brutes and then run your orc archers and you will see enormous, enormous damage output and survivability from Gothmog, okay? Um, once you do have anticipation leveled up, you'll want to put more points into discipline and max that out. Then you go up here and max out Orcus Warlord, but that's later, okay? That's in your mid-30s to 40s. Um, Gear-wise, since I said we're going to run ranged with this guy, okay? There's a couple things you can do. You can run Uruk Crossbow will be very strong for you if you're running ranged. That's my current plan. Also, if you happen to have um, a Reckoning, uh, you don't necessarily need, need Retaliate, but, but Reckoning will give plus attack to all Orcs, Urukai, and Evil Men, whether they're ranged or not. This can be very strong. Uh, so those are my recommendations for you, is get an Uruk Crossbow or the Reckoning to give plus ranged attack, okay? Because you can't use the standard bows. In addition to that, you can use Ranger Shroud if you happen to have one that's leveled up. It gives plus attack. If not, don't pick something with Shroud on it because uh, a piece of equipment with Shroud will not stack with your Anticipation Shroud. You'll basically be wasting that, okay? Um... I would probably grab the regular superior here, Bjork, with plus 15 defense. You can grab the scale mail, uh, right? This is going to be very strong for you. Or you can even go down. Well, no, no, because scale mail is for melee. What am I talking? I'm smoking crack. Um, this will help your orcs, your orc brutes survive, but not your, not your ranged. You can run this. You can run hunter skin, which is going to help your ranged. Superior Herberg's probably the best because it is going to be plus 15 defense to your whole army, okay? So, plus 15 defense from Herberg or plus attack from Ranger Shroud. Helmet, all right? He cannot use the standard Trapper's Hood, so you're going to have to be creative with your helmet. Um, personally, for me, you can either run Anti-Stun or you can run the full helmet with Inspire. I really like Inspire because, because if it triggers on my archers in round one, my archers are going to deal now 100% bonus damage in round one. So really up to you. Anti-stun is going to be amazing. Okay, uh, anti-madness is fine. Ins inspiration is interesting for Gothmog. All right. For the, uh, for the accessory, again, you're going to want something that gives plus attack to your ranged, okay, or some sort of plus damage to your ranged. So you're going to be looking at things like the Palantir of Orthanc, the uh, oops, the Palantir of Orthanc, or uh, it's really, really it. Unless you're going to use Orthanc's Devilry and just use that to maximize the damage range. There's not a whole lot of great accessories for Gothmog and range units. Um, worn out smoking pipe, give you some healing, whatever you want to do. Okay, really up to you. Palantir of Orthanx is probably the best, followed by Orthanx Devilry, okay? Um, and the only reason we're talking about range units with Gothmog, even though he can't use the helmet, the trapper's hood, or a good range damage accessory, is because Orc Archers are very, very strong early game. And if you are running the Orc Archers, combined with Gothmog's plus, you know, at max level, plus 75% damage for the first four rounds, that's an enormous amount of damage output. You really can't beat that with anything other than Witch King, okay? So those are the four commanders that I'll be using here in Season 4, folks. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. This is Randy coming at you live. I love you all a long time. Like and sub. Randy out.